I hear a lot of talk about old-time great fighters. I hear people say that Joe Lewis, Jack Dempsey, Jack Johnson, Jim Jeffries, and all of them would have annihilated the likes of myself, Muhammad Ali. After watching these films, watching their opponents, watching their styles, watching how they fought, watching the footwork and their speed, and my critics will admit that I am the fastest heavyweight in the history of boxing with feet and hands. It may come as a shock to you, but I say that I would have beat every heavyweight that ever lived before me. Liftoff will start in T minus 10 seconds. Hey everybody, this is Evan and John, and you're listening to the Boomer and X Show. Joe Lewis whoop me slow moving shuffling Joe Lewis beat me okay since you're not worried about this guy Cooper uh, how about when you get through with him what are your plans after that well uh, you're right I'm not even worried about this big bum uh, Cooper will only be a warm up until I get to that big ugly bear Sonny Liston I'm gonna lose your money then bet on Sonny We'll go in eight to prove that I am great. And if he want to go to heaven, I'll get him in seven. He'll be in the worst of fix if I cut it to six. And I'll whoop any man in the world, and I want everybody out there on TV to know it. I am the greatest. You're taking Zara Foley too lightly. Why would you say that? Because every indication has been that you're confident that you can beat Zara. I'm confident I can whoop all of them. This ain't nothing new. My image has been confident. We're just trying to make it look like something new for I'm always confident I can whoop all of them. You're being extremely truculent. Whatever truculent means, if that's good, I'm that. Just made an offer. A hundred dollars a round to spar with them. And you can only, and you can get in shape besides. Well, I'll make a better offer than that. I'll fight the champ for nothing. I'm way ahead of schedule. My time and my accuracy, my reach will be an inch and a half longer. The man is slower. The man is flat-footed. The man don't stand a chance. The stage has been set. This man is supposed to annihilate me. Ten years from Sunday night, I was supposed to be get at that time, I think it's befitting that I go out of boxing just like I came in, shocking the world by beating a big, bad, ugly monster that nobody could beat. I told you, all of my critics, I told you all that I was the greatest of all time. Want to beat Sonny Liston? I told you today, I'm still the greatest of all time. Never again defeat me. Never again say that I'm going to be defeated. Never again that make me the underdog until I'm about 50 years old. Right. Then you might get me. I told you, I'm the real champion. I told you, I'm the champion of the world. All of you bow. All of my critics crawl. It's Joe Frazier. They still think Joe Frazier can beat me. Come on, Gorilla. This is a thriller. <laughs> I don't care how small the ring is. I'll fight that chump in a telephone booth. Welcome everybody to the Boomer Next Show, and as you've probably figured out by now, we are going to spend some time paying tribute to Muhammad Ali. Ali Boomer. So when I heard about it, he had Parkinson's for thirty years. Yeah, for yeah, thirty yeah, he years. Was diagnosed. So yeah, he had suffered with Parkinson's for a long time, and in, in fact, you may you may remember that or you've probably even though if you, i don't know if you saw it in real time i don't know if you saw it when it was happening in, in 1996 but in the uh, olympic lighting of the torch lighting of the torch in the olympic games in atlanta yeah he was already he was bad shaky he was i remember him being real then, shaky yeah. uh i think he hadn't been able to speak since 2013 about 13 three yeah. years i think but um don't want to focus too, yeah, yeah, too yeah, heavily yeah. on that. Day. I want to talk about the um, the greatness, the fighter, the controversial figure. Certainly, um, didn't want to go to Vietnam. 
draft evasion, criminal charge, which was taken away, I think. I think it was, yeah, if I remember correctly, it went all the way to the Supreme Court. It, it, the conviction was overturned. Overturned, yeah. Yeah, yeah of course, now, he he put He's, himself down as a conscientious ob- objector. You yeah, know, yeah, which that's he, what I was going to get into. Known for, in the ring, of course, he was the greatest, is the greatest. I don't think anyone's... Well, yeah, I mean, I think, and we're going to talk about something a little bit later. Later, yeah. with yeah, yeah, with yeah. comparing, yeah, comparing, eras. you know, eras, and and I don't know because the, I mean, Rocky Marciano was never defeated. Ali, by the time it was over, lost five, five. fights. With a lot of those being, you know, late. late. Yeah, I think three of them were, yeah, very late. Yeah, but so uh, like I was getting at it in the in the ring, uh, you know, greatness, and then out of the ring, um, you know, the the stuff he did out of the ring. So let's get into that. You know, we started off with him. Draft evasion, uh, not a draft evasion. Um, conscious, conscientious yeah, yeah, um, objector. objector. Yeah. Well, but before that, even he won a gold medal in the Olympics in 1960, and so he was he was an Olympic gold medalist. Mm-hmm. And then his he takes the title, and he wasn't even supposed to be in the ring with Sonny Liston. I mean, mm-hmm. he was given no chance whatsoever. His mouth got him there, and and so he gets that chance, and. Um, he, you know, he shocks everybody by beating Sonny List. Oh, and by the way, during the Liston fight, he was still Cassius Clay. That was before. Mm-hmm. That was before he uh, joined the Nation of Islam and changed his name to Muhammad Ali. Cassius Marcellus Clay, by the way, uh, he called junior. it his slave name. Yeah, yeah. So he was very proud of his black heritage, and he let everyone know it. And uh, that was another thing, especially for that time. You know, he was uh, so much talent, and he kind of was very, he was not kind of, he was very anti-establishment, kind of thumbed his nose at authority and got away with it. Yeah. Being a black man in that age, you know, I guess a lot of people didn't really like him for that. And, uh, oh no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no! He was he was far from universally loved in America in mm-hmm. the 1960s. I think still, honestly. I think no, I, th- I think there's some hurt feelings still. Really? I think people still call him a draft evader and just won't get over that. I know I've heard it said. Yeah, I'm going to say but this. But we live in Louisiana. I, well, I, South I, I, Louisiana. I think those are the people that may very well attend meetings with sheets on their heads. <laughs> <laughs> Bonfires to see. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, Jesus <laughs> Christ, let it uh, go. I mean, b- because... Man, that was fifty years ago. That was fifty years ago, and the th- you know the thing about it is, is he he missed out on three and a half years mm-hmm. of prime career. I believe that to say that he was dodging just to dodge is wrong. I think that he really had conviction about being mm-hmm. you know being a conscientious and his, objector his to the trainer, war. He said one thing must be taken into account when you talk about when you whenever you talk about Ali, he was robbed of his best years in his prime. Yeah. Three of his best years. So what could be and his trainer said that as soon as it was going on, you know, he said we're gonna be talking about this anytime Ali is talked about, he was robbed of three of three years in his prime. And he why would he just give that up? To, to, to dodge the draft. Uh, anyway, Nation of Islam, he was a Muslim and... and um, not, not secretive about it at not, all? Well, no, not at all. <laughs> and I think, and again, I was pretty young when this was going on. I mean, I was I was aware of it. And as he fights through the 70s, I see a lot of the fights. And... Here, here's something I want to ask. Okay. Did you like him growing up because you grew up during all of this right you know he was done fighting by the time i was born mm-hmm. i know you don't like showboaters in the nfl i know you don't like guys who you know yay you scored a, a touchdown that's what you're there to do right you knocked a home run that's what you're there to do did you like ali growing up that's a good question and i i, I think i was probably too young to say i liked him or didn't like him but I more often than not, I was probably pulling for the guys that he was fighting against, Frazier and Foreman. I was probably pulling for them because because of that. Really? But, but yeah, okay. yeah, because of that. Be- so you've always kind of had that. 
I've always kind of had that just do your thing and there's no reason to you know let let your performance do its talking exactly. now, but let me let me say let me say this over the years as as I've matured and watched the world and so forth and so forth and so on I have come to respect what he was doing he was bringing in an audience he was he was having fun he was promoting he was bringing more interest in the sport than had ever been brought in the sport before and i appreciate that now and i think i've probably traveled the path of a lot of americans especially a lot of white americans over the years i've certainly come to appreciate him would i you know if i were to go back in the 70s and watch frazier and and ali again i I might still pull for frazier were you pulling for him when you beat him the first time um yeah i mean i i mean there if there were times you know maybe late in his career when he was going up against um larry holmes or somebody like that i might have been pulling for him but certainly early on with the frazier fights and with the foreman fight i was i was pulling for those guys now the sonny liston thing was before Mm -hmm. i was like what two years old one year old so i don't have any memory of that but I've always, and as you noted, and you and I have watched enough sporting events together, I typically kind of like to stay away from the guys that are bragging a lot. But, again, now I see more what he was doing. He was he was being a showman, mm-hmm. and that sport had never had a showman before. That's true. It's something you said, I don't know who you said said it, but that day and age, being the heavyweight champion – yeah, was the biggest sports title you could have. It, it was, and I'm going to say every leading, leading up uh, it, from 1970s and prior, mm-hmm. being the heavyweight boxing champion of the world was the single greatest title a man could hold in the world of sports at all. Yeah. At all, I mean, mm-hmm. it was it was bigger than being the quarterback of the Super Bowl champions. It I would think bigger maybe baseball champs would hold pretty close, mm-hmm. but I agree. It's, I'm gonna say I'm gonna was... say Muhammad Ali, Joe Lewis, uh Rocky Marciano. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna say those figures were even bigger than Babe Ruth. Now it's kinda hard to make the comparison because you're gonna, you know, a hundred, a hundred and six. I don't know if they back when Babe Ruth played. I don't know if they played 162 games like they do now, but yeah. it, you know, a lot of games. And so you're out there playing baseball games on, on half half the days of the year almost. Mm-hmm. Where, Where you, whereas in boxing matches, you may have one or two matches. You may have a couple of matches a year, and especially if you're defending titles, you're not going to be yeah. doing that that often. Mm-mm. 61 in his whole career. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. One thing, so I, I, you know, I didn't get to see him boxing, mm-hmm. but growing up, I knew who he was. I knew he was the greatest boxer ever. Right. I knew he was loudmouth. Mm-hmm. I knew he backed his words up. I knew he resembled in 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 body greatness. I just knew that growing up. Right. It's it's a, it's in a book somewhere that I was taught. I don't know. I don't know how I learned it. Growing up. In my eighty nine, I'm a nineties kid, I guess. <laughs> right, right. Growing up, I just knew he's he's the greatest ever. And and I'll say this: Did you even know a name of a boxer that fought before you were alive? Did you? no, 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 no. Um, Joe Frazier, maybe Sugar Ray, his dad, Sugar Ray Robinson. Robinson. Sugar Ray Robinson was like from the forties or fifties. Sugar Ray Leonard was from the seventies okay, so and early eighties. Sugar Ray Leonard then. Is Sugar Ray Robinson his dad? No, no, no. It's well, no. Sugar Ray. Robinson and Leonard, no. No. Oh. <laughs> but Sugar Ray Robinson was like a middleweight back in the 40s or 50s. Or, Before your time. Yes. Hmm. Yes. So, no. No to answer your question. I didn't. Um, but I, I didn't really follow boxing. Uh, I still don't really. But, like, I, even not following boxing... Somewhere you, 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 along right. the way, you, right. I learned and knew the name he's Muhammad the Ali. Yes, yeah. you knew the name so Muhammad Ali. That's, well, he look he he certainly was bigger than the sport he was in. Mm-hmm. He was, and I'm going to say, arguably, the most famous athlete in the history of of the world. 
most recognizable. His fights were broadcast to dozens upon dozens upon dozens of nations. They went and fought in places like Zaire and the Philippines. So Places that aren't even around anymore. Well, Zaire, I don't, I don't believe, is a country anymore. Yeah. I, I mean, it's there, but it's, it's not, there, but yeah. it's, it's something. Of course, the Philippines are still there. Yeah. But so they took this on a on a worldwide stage, and it was broadcast yep. all over the place. And here's something else: before, uh, in order to get the purse up, you didn't have pay per view ho- events in the home. You had what they called closed circuit TV, and people would gather at some sort of indoor venue, like a convention center, or uh, you know, an indoor basketball arena, or something like that. And it would be televised into, so you would go pay to watch it on a television set. But they didn't have sports bars yeah. with you know TVs all over them back then. It was it was it was different, and they did that in order to to get the purse up. Now later on, I mean, I know I remember watching his fight. I don't remember if it was the first one or the second one against Leon Spinks. He actually lost to Leon Spinks yep. and then came back and and beat, beat him. him. One of those, I'm pretty sure, was in the Superdome. I think. Huh. One of those uh, Spinks Ali fights was was in the Superdome, if I remember correctly. And now we're talking about up around 1980, 81, something like that. Pretty late in his career, yeah. But um, to, to get back to the to the point, heavyweight champion of the world was the biggest thing you could be in sports. The biggest. Yep. So, uh, you know, we played the. Him mm-hmm. just being him, right? Doing, I guess, more promoting more, right? Right. Uh, my favorite, and I'm glad it wasn't in that little montage. Uh, his was, uh, if you have a dream about beating me, you better wake up and apologize. <laughs> <laughs> and that that one on the end, that, I hadn't heard that one until we did, we did this. I'll fight that man in a phone booth. <laughs> <laughs> well, that because that was one of the knocks on him was that he he danced and moved yeah. and instead of. You know, instead of box. Yeah. Uh, but again, it just shows how he evolved the sport. Not only did he evolve the promotion of the sport, mm-hmm. but he evolved the sport. And can't hit what you can't see. He can't. I, I believe that was the last part of his. Um, Fly like a bumblebee. F- uh, float, float like, like a, a bumble, butterfly. Yeah. Float like a butterfly. Sting like a bee. You yeah. can't hit what you can't see. I think is is mm-hmm. is the entire rhyme. And, but, and man, he would back that up. Man, he would get in the ring and. Literally, I mean, you can go on YouTube and put Muhammad Ali dancing in the ring and just him running around and not not running from the fight, but moving the fight around so much that he could just pick his people apart. And he, there were sometimes he could just put his hands down and dodge, you know, dodge punches. And that's he was fast. He was he was unbelievably the, the fastest uh, heavyweight ever. He was unbelievably flat fast for a heavyweight, and that's that's how he won a lot. I mean, what is that weight range? About two fifteen? Uh, it's it's actually lighter than you would think. I it's think like it's anything over. Yeah, I mean it's two fourteen, two ten, probably something. what they. Yeah, I'm even thinking it at at one point it was anything over like. 205 or something it's it's not all that heavy but anyway he was he was extremely fast and i think one thing that that um he didn't get enough credit for was his toughness and and that this might have been a place where his looks just actually went against him just because how can someone that handsome be that tough but in a fight against ken norton he actually had his jaw broken during the course of the fight mm-hmm. and and kept fighting. I mean, he he could take a lot of punishment. As he far really as his, could. Uh, showmanship, you know, like I said, he does the dancing and he also did uh I don't know if he was the first one to do this, but the faking like he was knocked out mm-hmm. doing the wobbly knees. He did that against Frazier. He yeah. got he caught Frazier off guard, yep. you know, doing that. There was another guy um in the ring. He so so this I can't even remember uh Terrell, 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 I think was the boxer's name he was going against. He um, wouldn't call him Muhammad Ali. He kept calling him Cassius Clay. Mm-hmm. He said, no, call me by my, my name. And he wouldn't, and he told him, you know, and there in front of everybody, you're going to say my name in the middle of that ring. And sure enough, he wouldn't knock the dude out. And in the in the fight, he's he kept, say my name, what's my name, say my name, and just punched him in mm-hmm. the face until he, I, I guess maybe he said his name, I don't know. But stuff like that, you just never heard of, especially back then, you know. Um, 
And so all of this, all of the knowledge I have is just me going back and watching. There's tons of stuff on YouTube. I mean, I didn't, I didn't get to, you know, I wasn't raised watching him or anything. So man, he's a, he's, he's fun to watch. And I, and especially for the time when no one else is doing that, I can imagine it was pretty wild. Well, it, you know, it's, it's funny. Let's say he was at his peak in, in his, in the, in the late, early seventies, early to mid seventies, he was in his peak and, um, and, um, and, um, Oscar winning movie came out in 1976, Rocky. Mm-hmm. And of course, you know, the, the the movie is all about Rocky Balboa, this this underdog, you know, fighter that no name and he's just randomly picked. But the heavyweight champion Mr. of the T. world, no, no, was um, Apollo Creed. The, the, the movie heavyweight champion of the world at the time was Apollo Creed. His antics, his bragging, his showmanship, his, his dancing, all of that, that was all inspired mm-hmm. by Muhammad Ali. Mm-hmm. That that character of Apollo Creed was inspired by Muhammad Ali. I thought it was pretty cool when Sylvester Stallone was at the Oscars doing a presentation. Um, Ali came out and and he was like, "Hey, you you uh <laughs> you stole my character and put him on the on your movie." <laughs> And, uh, you know, so it was pretty funny. And I don't even know if uh, Stallone even won anything, but he said, hey, if I don't win anything, you know, this is one of the biggest, you know, standing by this guy on this stage, biggest thing. So, uh, uh, well, uh, Rocky won Best Picture. Did he? Yeah. And, and I, I think it won several other. But does that go to Stallone or does that go to the directors and stuff? Well, still, it was a one man show. I mean, I'm not talking about on the screen, but that was written by Stallone. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Whether it was directed by Stallone or not, I don't know. But he wrote that. That was his hmm. story. That's pretty cool. Well, now some that. say that he stole the story from there was an and I forget the guy's name, but anyway, don't want to go down that rabbit hole. <laughs> but yeah, I mean that was that was Stallone's creation. Rocky was Stallone's okay. creation. So yes, he won an Oscar for that. In summing up and finishing up our oh. our. Our segment about Muhammad Ali passed away at the age of 74, June 3rd, 2016. It's a shame that he spent so much time, three decades, in failing health. Because with his um, activist nature, he probably could have and would have done even more in his post-boxing life, you know, yeah. than he did. But I, one thing that impressed me over the later years, and again, as I came to really grow up and, and understand more what he was doing with his showmanship and, and his and his big mouth, um, one thing I also came to respect even more was that even though, look, it's uncomfortable for us to watch somebody in that state yeah. sh- shaking like that. It, yeah, I mean, it's, it's... so... If it's uncomfortable for the viewer, think about how easy it would be for... Just to not show up. Just to stay away. Yeah. Just to stay away. So the fact that he remained active and out there doing things like that spoke a lot to his character and his uh, bravery, I think. Yeah. I do. So we're going to take a quick break, and then we're going to come back and hit some other topics in a sports format again this this is since we decided to go with all sports yeah since muhammad ali passed away and we wanted to devote a good portion of the show to him but we're going to take a quick break come back and hit some other topics in a little bit more of a rapid fire way Oh, who could stick him, stick him? 
Stay off the range when he don't want to punch. When he's ready to punch, move in. Stick, 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 stick. That's what you do a man like Joe Frazier. Back off of him. Just keep boxing. Sal. Nowhere in the world. Man, don't have no footwork. Kill him. 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 Kill I'm handsome, I'm fast, I'm pretty, and can't possibly be beat. Ali moving in on London. A fuselage of punches by Muhammad Ali. London goes down. I saw Sonny Liston a few days ago, Jack. Ain't he ugly? <laughs> he, he's too ugly to be the world champ. The world champ should be pretty like me. Well, he told me to bet my life that you wouldn't go three rounds. Well, if you want to lose your money, then bet on something. My dream's all messed up for six more weeks. The man's in trouble. The man is scared. He's in my country to start with. I'm going to float like a butterfly and sing like a bee. His hands can't hit what his eyes can't see. You're too ugly to represent us colored folks. These Africans, they gone for us ugly. Sucker, look at you. How you out, sucker? Okay, so we're back, and so let's he, talk about some minute NBA Finals. Yeah, a little bit of NBA Finals. We're two games into, as of this recording, we're two games into the Finals with uh, runaway victories by the Golden State Warriors. Mm-hmm. Now, we, you and I watched a couple of games together. We've talked about some of the ones we didn't watch. You've paid a whole lot more attention during the course of the whole year mm-hmm. than I did. I, I'm bandwagon, I admit it. But you told me something after, well, as 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 the finals were about to start, you told me something. You said that the um, that the Western Conference Finals were your finals. Yeah, that you felt that was going to be the best series. Why? Um, because those teams when they met in the regular season, what teams? Uh, OKC and Golden State. Okay, when they met in the regular mm-hmm. season. Uh, first of all, Golden State beat them one time. Golden. I mean, I'm sorry. First of all, uh, o- Oklahoma beat them once. Okay. And uh, they, they were, were they were all close awesome games. games. They were always, always close, close games. Yeah. I was very excited about those that matchup. The what did you not like about the Cleveland, Oklahoma, uh, uh, the Golden, East in Golden general? State. Just East, yeah, East was weak. They're weak, and um, that's that's mostly it. You know, I just knew. I knew they were um high, you know they had their high scoring capabilities we mm-hmm. know with all you know their big guys and LeBron you know says enough just him but when they played in the regular season they beat them 5 times and they played 5 so five. It, it, so they're all, 7 and 0 against uh, Cavs right now okay so it, what what kind of margins did they have I in don't, those I don't five? remember I don't, they weren't 33 points right, that's for but, sure yeah so I don't know I can't recall but I do know I was way more excited about the Oklahoma City right, matchup right. than this one. And so far, it was better. So far, it has certainly borne itself out. Yeah. I tell you what, when a team when a, when a team is down 3 to 1 and and you're going in <laughs> and you're going into their house. Into their house with and those crazy fans. And you're what 7 8 points down early in the fourth quarter and you're facing elimination. And how Oklahoma City could not close that deal, and how uh, Golden State refused to die, <laughs> and and then when and you know and and then they go back, um, then they go back home and you know they clinch it at home. And I really thought I really thought Game One of the championship series might 
it could actually go to Cleveland. And again, I didn't have, I didn't really know the background mm -hmm. of zero and five and five and zero during the regular mm -hmm. season, but I thought it might go to Cleveland because I thought they were rested and and I thought that there could be a little bit of an emotional hangover from last year for no for Golden State from having just won oh, their title going through what they three I nights don't think earlier. Those guys are like Tom Brady on the field. They're robots. They do not feel pressure. All of them, every single one of them. I mean. They all have their superstar moments when they need to. Well, they do. They and and do. so far in the finals right now, uh, Steph Curry ain't nothing but a cheerleader. He's done very little. <laughs> he has certainly done very little. Now, although he he won Game Seven of the semis. I mean, he's done his job pretty that's much. For sure. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, and the <laughs> thing about it is, is and you know what? I'm gonna. This is a tribute to him. Yeah. He doesn't have to. No. He he's doesn't. His, he doesn't feel like he, he has, has his to. Bench outscoring. All of their starters, and and, and that's and not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. He's fine with that. <laughs> he, it's 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 kind of amusing to see him sitting on the bench yeah. and and cheering, cheering. The, the way he is. So you know he's not into hero ball. Nope. He's not into oh, me, me, and me, and that's me. That's why they are where they are. That's and, why they are where they yeah. are, and that's what makes them so much fun to watch. And there was a sequence in Game Two the other night where there were about three or four passes, and I mean it was like a ball touching a hand mm -hmm. and going in the other direction not even grasping but it just like you know redirected like, just redirected yeah. <laughs> and i'm like wow that's just some passing smooth. that's some passing yeah. so two games into this what do you see for the remainder of this series what's your prediction here's here's what i hoped for mm -hmm. last year what did we hear well Kyrie, right and kevin love right. are gone right guess what you're back you're back you got five points you played three quarters kevin love Kyrie was he even in the game? Yeah, I mean, so w what's with that argument? Right, you know that was their reason last year. Here's their matchup everyone in America wanted. They have it. They're zero and two, and I think they're gonna. I think I don't want to say they're gonna get swept, but man, they might get swept. Well, tomorrow night, Wednesday night, they're at home. They're at home. Do you think that they, you know, some life, or is it? Or are they just mentally defeated, emotionally defeated? All right, the Golden State Warriors continue to make and break records, mm -hmm. and you want to know one they set? What? Best road wins. Yeah, they did. So I don't see that as a problem for them. So I don't. I, I say they, it's not going to slow them down any. I so mean, you say they, they win game three in, in uh, sure. Cleveland? Yeah, I'm going to say they win it. Um, well, it, it will surprise me because Kay. I really well, thought – Kevin Love's out. I mean, he's, he's, he's concussion. Concussion, yeah. So yeah. – yeah, I'm. I'm saying, yeah. They, you know what? I'm gonna just say it. They're gonna sweep. They're gonna sweep. Them. Wow. Sure. Uh, I think I've mentioned on here before that I lived in Houston when they were doing back to backs. Mm -hmm. When they were winning back to backs in the mid in the mid '90s, and it was look, it was a lot of fun living in a city that was going through its first championship of of anything. And so the first one was great, but the second one was was even more special in some ways because. Houston was I think they went in as a fifth or sixth seed. They were they were the road team, they were the underdog in every series hmm. they had. And if I remember correctly, they on one of the series, they were down 3 to 1 and then won. And they had so much momentum. By the time they got to the finals against Orlando, they swept them. And as I'm watching this, as I'm watching a team survive from the brink of elimination, I mean, they were just a few minutes away oh, yeah. on the road yeah. from being eliminated. And they survived that and come back. When you have that kind of belief, I don't know. Man. They may sweep. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they may sweep, which leads us to a conversation that has started. Where does this team, this this Golden State Warriors team fit among the greatest of the teams of the NBAs of different eras. This is a conversation people love to have. Do you have any thoughts where they may be versus the Showtime Lakers or the Celtics of the 80s or the Bulls of the 90s? I put them right there, man. Do you? I mean, I know they don't. What's, what's the – everyone wants to compare rings you know, right. and stuff, but, man, just – Watch them play. The guys who played on those mm -hmm. teams are, of course, you know, saying that they could beat them. But, man, the best ball – I'm watching the best basketball I've seen in my entire life. I never saw Jordan play, so I can't – I right. can attest to him. In right. my life, this is the best basketball I've ever seen. And that's with my favorite player being Steve Nash. Right. And that's who Steph Curry reminds me of. That's why I like Steph so much. But 
Man. I, I think when you there, – there are two things that really impress me. One is the outside shooting. I, I, it would be hard for somebody to make a case that we've ever seen anything approaching this that, yeah. in outside shooting. He shoots like a possessed man, but, sold his soul to the but, devil. But, but, uh, but Clay Thompson. Yeah, I mean, you know, he's he's great also. And man, the other night, Draymond Green was draining them from all over the place. So there's that long range shooting that I don't I think, think that's is the, not not the the players all have in the NBA. Not all, but most of the NBA players can shoot threes. They just don't because I guess what I'm trying to get at is the game is changing from a go in there and dunk it to you know, pass it around and get your, your easy three point shot and drain it. And which for my money is a lot more exciting to watch. I, I agree. It just I, is. I don't I will jump out of my seat and and fist pump but out a three point and out a dunk. I'm just I agree. like eh. I agree. And I and when you as as the ball is on its arc and you see you'll see fans in the yeah. in the stands standing up waiting, waiting, anticipating cheering that ball going in and when it does it's really it's really kind of cool. But something else, man, the defense. The defense they play. Everything that that Cleveland is doing is is contested. I tell you what, I, I I think you know right now we have the Showtime Lakers, um, who who Clay Thompson is the reason it's even in the the media right now is because Clay Thompson said yeah we'd beat him you know right joking around his dad played for his him. dad played for him so you know that's probably an inside joke that they always go back and forth but media did with it what they do with stuff but it the the it's out there you know could they beat him I think they could. I think they could because it was those five. Look at the bench that this yeah, team has yeah. too. And I said that last year when when the Cavs right, were playing, right? And they still have all those guys, and they're all. It really says something about the coaching that all of these guys are are this tight and this well rounded. Yeah, they didn't. They didn't all get there this good. Right, right. And you you don't seem to have a, a struggle of egos. Uh. Uh-uh. So that again, it says a lot about the coaching. Says a lot about the players. Uh, a lot of fun to watch. But this, you know, and it's not just basketball that has this conversation. Compare the eras. It, it, me being a big football fan, I know that football fans like to discuss the Packers, the, the Packers the of the '60s versus the Steelers of the '70s versus the 49ers of the '80s. Versus the Broncos of the 2000s? Oh, uh, no. They're not <laughs> in the conversation. And it's funny. You would almost want to put the New England Patriots in there, but of the what's of the 2000s going, you know, I mean, you know, going going back, spanning. Well, you got to take away like two of their titles of for cheating. Time. So. <laughs> Just kidding, you, uh, pack, and the, you uh, New England fans. But um, – Here's here's my take on it. One is you you can't definitively answer this question. As a Never, as ever. a sports fan though, I can It's fun s- to talk about. It's fun to talk about, but I consider myself fortunate that I am watching something that is spurring we'll that conversation. Talk- yeah. I am it's watching history, something. Yeah. And of it, course with the Steelers with me personally being a huge Steelers fan, um I mean, I just remember there was no bigger thrill for me as a as a teenager than my Steelers winning the Super Bowl with two of them being against the Cowboys. And I was born and raised in Cowboy country. Yeah. So it was especially sweet when they beat the Cowboys. But it's I mean, it's a fun conversation to have. But I, I think anybody that takes it too seriously is is missing the point. We're watching something that's a lot of fun to watch as a sports fan. Exactly. Watch it and enjoy it. Yeah, because you can get into the games are totally different now and i mean because basketball i mean when jordan them guys were playing it was brutal you'd go in there and take five hits and and slam it and not get a foul called the rest would blow the whistle before you even start dribbling nowadays they, so, they do seem like in the finals they're letting them play i mean that, look, that's true. a guy got a concussion that's on a true. on a, on on a, a no play that don't no call i mean that's pretty <laughs> that's true i'll give you that but so, it definitely overall they blow that whistle way more often, and they're talking about adding a fourth ref. Yeah. So I don't know what's going to happen with that. But I don't know. I, to, to me, they the blow end, the whistle enough. Yeah. The, a two-hour game. I don't even. How long is a game supposed to last? I don't is know. it just? It's thirty minutes each quarter, right? No, it's it's it's. I mean, not quarter. It's fifteen it's a, minutes a quarter. Yeah, fifteen minutes a quarter. Fifteen minutes a quarter. Um, or is yeah, or is it twelve? It's twelve. 
Is it? It's 12 minutes a quarter. Yeah, it's 12 minutes a quarter. Uh, college is 20 a half. Yeah, that's how I was thinking. And high school is eight a quarter. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's 12 minutes a quarter. So, I mean, really, you got 48 minutes of clock time. But, you know, a football game has 60 minutes of clock time in the last three and a half hours. So, but... Uh, yeah, one other thing that we wanted to hit a couple of weeks ago, the conferences had their team meetings, and there were a couple of things that I thought were interesting. One is Jim Harbaugh is at, is is having quote satellite camps all over the country. Well, him and other teams were doing it, but this he, was his, he's what, the big one. Wasn't this his idea? Did he kind uh, of start no? He, I don't think he was, oh, the was first. Okay, there was definitely a smaller someone before him. Okay, but gotcha. I mean, this is Harbaugh. He's doing it. The, the he brings as many. Uh, media as he does fans right so, right it, of course it was reported on and he's down here in sec country right trying to take sec players sure. from the nick saban and right. guess he wasn't happy with that <laughs> so and, and and they were successful they were they were sent back up to michigan well and so nick starts complaining about it and it says quote it's not good for football i'm mm-hmm. not i'm not sure exactly what's not good about it i well, mean if he's not winning it ain't good for oh football. is that what it is <laughs> <laughs> um I think the player should be able to go wherever they want, and they should have the opportunity to see as many teams as possible without having to get on a a plane and fly all over the place. You know, I I like it. I like satellite camps. I haven't delved into it too much, but I think if you have a guy from Michigan, a team from Michigan coming in down to Houston, and you live in Louisiana, that's a way easier trip to make to go see. You know, maybe I want to join this team, but I ain't going all the way up to Michigan to right. check them out. Right. So, right. I like it for that. I like it too. I, if I, I were a player in high school and I had that opportunity, I would dive at it, man. And and uh, of course, that gives my well crap. I gotta go to Alabama, or hey, maybe I can do Michigan now. You know, opens your your options. And think about it. If if you're if you're a coach from a a school in another part of the country. The only the only championships that haven't gone to SEC schools in the past what fifteen years were to Florida State mm-hmm. and Ohio State. Well, Florida State is basically is SEC, SEC country. SEC country. Yeah. So you've got one championship in the past twelve, thirteen, fourteen, whatever years that has gone to mm-hmm. another part of the country that's not south of Tennessee and east of Texas. Yep. So if, you know, if coaches from around the country are looking at that and say, you know what, let's go down there, let's pitch a tent, let's have some tryouts and see what we yeah. can do, then fine, do it. Yeah. Do it because we don't – look, here's what's not good for college football, for it to be a regional sport. Monopoly. A monopoly of if, that area. Right, yeah. right. For it to be a regional sport, that's not good. Exactly. So, and, you know, I kind of like hardball anyway. But one other thing that came out, the already here, the over-unders. Now, the, the over-unders, for those of you that aren't the uninitiated in betting, this is the number of games. Vegas set these numbers. Vegas set these up. This is the number of games that a team – is expe- is expected to win. If you bet over, you're and you're lose. betting on them to win more. Now, if you bet the under, you're betting on That's them true. to win fewer. Yeah, 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 yeah. So SEC, I'm looking at a list of SEC schools, and I'll just give you the top three: Alabama at ten. Now, keep in mind this is regular season only, so that twelve game seasons. Alabama's at ten. LSU's at ten. Do you see anything in that that? Oh, and Tennessee's at nine point five. Those are the top three. Do you see anything in that that makes you – that raises an eyebrow? Or does, do, do those numbers seem in line to you? The players LSU has right now, mm-hmm. they can do 10. Okay. I don't think Alabama has – By the way, you have to do 11. That, yeah. You have to do 11 to win this bet. Oh. Oh, There's oh no would ties. I take that bet? There's no ties. Are you asking if I would take that bet? I'm saying, well, do you bet the over or under. the under? Now, if it ties, what happens? It's a push. There's, okay. there's nothing. I would bet the under, okay, on both on both Alabama and yeah. LSU. Yeah, I'm 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 through betting against Alabama. I'm through predicting the demise of Alabama and Nick Saban. I won't do that until he's retired for five years, and yeah. then I'll say he's probably through winning national championships because he's won 14 in the last three years. So I'm not gonna <laughs> I'm not gonna I'm not gonna question that. But I'll tell you this: as someone who sat here last November and watched Nick uh, watched Les Miles almost get fired, and I was among those feeling like he deserved to be gone. 
ten seems awfully high to me. No, they have the talent. They well, they, they guess what? They they, they always, they, they have, always the have the talent. They always have the talent. They always have the talent. And they do win ten games every once mm, in a while. Nine or eight. Look, you, in That's order to exactly in, in, in order to, yeah, in order to yeah. cash this bet, there's got to be eleven or twelve, and I'm going to bet the under. I'm not well. First of all, I'm not going to bet. Okay, but if I were, I would bet the under. So yeah, they have the talent, which is why they have the ten. I would say, um, I'd bet the over bet on the Arkansas under. at seven point five. I would bet the over on Arkansas. Well, yeah. Let's, are, are there any other that jumped out at you? Other Florida than? at seven point five seems a little light. Now, to me, they were exposed late in the year as not being as good as they had looked in the first half of the season, but still, seven point five seems a little low for them. Mississippi State at only 6.5. Now, I understand that Zach Prescott, their quarterback of the past several years, is gone. 6.5 seems a bit low for them. And Texas A&M at 6. Texas huh. A&M at 6. Did they if, lose a coach or something? Well, no. No. But I tell you what, about two or three years ago, they gave Mike Tom Sumlin, Tom Sumlin a big raise. And I said then that Okay, way to go, Texas A&M. You're going to re- regret that, and and they are because they're <laughs> they're not winning anything that matters. Hell, they lost to yeah. to LSU last you know last November when nobody else could. So I still say though, six man, if that if that number's anywhere close to being right, this is Sumlin's last year at A&M. I'm going to say I, that. Yeah, I would agree to that. Um, now these these numbers, they're just. Um, I, I guess they've already equated defense, offensive, well, overall, the, everything, right? I mean, this is this is Vegas's early stab at it. Hmm. Can you place bets now? Uh, sure. How late can you till the day? The well, game now, now in? these numbers will change based on how money's going. Just like a money line, just yeah. like a line will change. Yeah. And they may have already changed. Michigan is uh, now jumping over to the to the Big Ten for a bit. Michigan is at ten. Oh, uh, Ohio State's at nine and a half. Now remember, I would, I would short both of them. You would go under, yeah, on both of them. Is short the proper term? No, bet the under. That's stocks. <laughs> That's stocks. That's stocks. Yeah, this this is not the big short. <laughs> uh, bet the under. Nebraska at eight point five. I'd bet the under on that one. Yeah, I would. Uh, the ACC, Clemson at ten and a half, Florida State at nine and a half. Man, ten and I'm a half. I'm betting under all these. Uh, I wouldn't Florida State. What was theirs? Theirs is nine and a half. So that means ten gets you. Can you ten. bet for a push? No. Well, <laughs> well, it's nine and a half. I know. Can you say no? I push. No, <laughs> not on that. I bet they'll nine and a half. No. Um, I'm gonna. I would. I would go the over on Florida State. And again, this is without looking at any of their opponents or their schedules. The Big Twelve, Oklahoma at ten, Baylor at nine point five. Baylor, this now these numbers came out before Baylor fired their coach because everybody was getting away with some bad shenanigans, or some people were getting away with bad shenanigans. My guess is that you that nine point five number is not there anymore. <laughs> but I'm going to say the under on that nine point five. Uh, Texas at six point five. Man, is Charlie Strong? I, you know what? I'd bet the over. I would bet the over. I think Charlie Strong is starting to get things together a little bit. Here's one that surprises me out west. Washington at 9 and Stanford at 8.5. UCLA at 8.5. Only one I would bet over is UCLA. UCLA at 8 point. You would would bet 9 or above on them. Yeah. Um, Stanford is good for I think Stanford is good for nine or more. Yeah. In during the regular season. Washington, I would love to see Chris Peterson do there do well there. That's the coach that had all the success at Boise State. And this is his third or fourth year at Washington. But I don't know, nine seems a little high. That's a lot better than they did last year. And and Houston uh, at American Athletic Conference, I think Houston was like twelve and over or eleven and one last year and I think I think I remember them winning their bowl game pretty handily. I would go above 9.5 on Houston. As far as I want to hit this real quick, Notre Dame is an independent in 9.5. I'd bet under. The under? I, I would tend to agree. I think I'm betting the under on all of them. Uh, yeah, almost of them you did. <laughs> BYU at 8. 
Somebody's got to win. Some, <laughs> <laughs> well, some of these lower teams down here, and I want to hit. We'll hit the local scene real quick. Who they just made the news? Did you see that? I didn't know. Right. ESPN. The coach was. They're doing wall sits with forty-five pound plates on their laps. Okay, and he's walking across them, and they're singing the fight song. So that made it on ESPN. I saw it on Facebook. Somebody posted it, and then it made it all the way to ESPN. Thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. And so Katie was a trainer there. And at ULL. Yeah, at We're ULL. We're talking about ULL, the University of Louisiana Lafayette. And he, and she always thought that was real cool how he, the head coach always made them learn the fight song and sing it a lot mm-hmm. throughout their workouts and stuff. So when I saw that, I was like, yeah, Katie said he did that. And right. then I guess it's so out there that – and get it, we're like 100 days from – first day i mean probably 100 days out probably mm, from first day what first of, of actual game the first pig skin flung no we're it's going to be not less probably less than 90 by now because it is early june That's yeah true. yeah it's less than 90 it's less than 90 days so but i mean they're that's some pretty hardcore pre-workout stuff it is there. of or course pre- learn, learning the fight song is one thing <laughs> based on their record last year they might have learned the playbook a little better they're over under 6.5. What do you think? Mm, I hadn't seen their schedule, but I think they're good for seven. And the one of the colleges I attended, ULM, their over that's under a, is 3.5. They, wow. What happened? Well, they, boy, they, they always suck. Um, well, they, I mean, weren't they, didn't they go to a conference they, championship? They, no, they went, to a, they went to the Independence oh. Bowl a few years back and got throttled by the University of Ohio. Oh, okay. Uh, and I said, and I said, I went to that. I went to that game and sat in thirty nine degrees and drizzle, and I stayed to the end of a forty point blowout. And my Ooh. son and grandson were so pissed off at me <laughs> for making them sit out. In the, but you know how That's I how am. Yeah, I go to That's a game. I stay till the end. Uh, ULM finally fired their coach last year, and they hired right. the McNeese right. State coach. So we'll, we'll, you know, we'll see how that goes. But the the guy they fired was the lowest paid Division One coach in the country. So I, I you know what do you expect? But uh, Sun Belt Appalachian State eight point five. I don't know what kind of big schools they're playing. They usually put a really tough one or two on their schedule. But I would bet the over at eight point five on Appalachian State. So that's a little bit of quick chatter on the over unders just a little shot over the bow if you will of college football something that we will hit hard and heavy a few months down the road show sure enough but that's it for right now evan do you have anything to add to our yeah lsu won today that's baseball, right. baseball 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 lsu won uh what five to two the game three yep. in their series, yep. so they're going to so they're going to super regional, super regional, which they do host. Yep. So, so, and it's good because my God, this was supposed to end on Sunday and it ended on Tuesday afternoon because it just rained like crazy. For everybody that's not in the Gulf South, the Gulf Central, Gulf states, it yep. just it rained all weekend like crazy. Um, something they have some big festival going on in Baton Rouge during the super regional. I can't remember what it is. Buy you something fest or okay. whatever. The traffic already is crazy there. Can you imagine a super regional and some big festival going on? Well, the only Dude. thing is with you're only as far as baseball goes, you're going to get ten, ten and a half thousand. I mean, it's it's nowhere yeah. near like the hundred thousand of so Sports even even if you pack a house, I mean, and get a yeah. great crowd, it's going to be ten, ten and a half thousand. That's true. Um, they should have won last year. So I think it's good that they're where they are now. I don't know who their super regional matchup is against. I um, I, I, I don't know. But you, sir, are headed out on family business and family vacation. Yep. And as we speak here in the early morning hours of Wednesday, June 8th, and we will try to get this out ASAP. It'll probably be a couple of weeks, won't it, before we do this again? Nah. <laughs> I will. Uh, you're gonna call me. One. Yeah. You're gonna call me while you're on I'll vacation. I'll be at the beach and be like, "Hey, <laughs> I'm out on a paddleboard in the middle of the uh, Gulf." Um, we didn't hit it tonight, but 
Hillary now has the delegates. She won't be the, the nominee officially until the convention, but she now has the delegates. So I guess it's first woman to ever win the Democratic to, to win any yeah to win any, any major college yeah. uh, I mean major college uh, to win any major party <laughs> nomination. And so that's historical. Lover, hater, don't care one way or the other. That is historical. So just to toss a bone to that. And believe me, when we get back to doing the show in a couple of weeks, we'll certainly hit the politics because yep. we'll, be, we'll be coming into the um, conventions pretty soon. And uh, I'm sure we'll How, when chat a lot about start? that. When does the, uh, of course, after the uh, yeah after convention. the conventions, but I mean it's already started. I that's mean, true. I mean Hillary and Donald yeah, are just firing true. shots at each other like crazy. That's true. So uh, so we'll here's my here's my prediction: everybody will get tired of watching it pretty soon and tune it out because it's going to be so damn ugly. But uh, we'll we'll see. I I mean an entertainment factor, and then it'll be like oh my god enough already. We'll we'll see. I think. I think we might be surprised by both of them. What tone it down and I, I think so. I don't think Donald knows how. <laughs> I don't think he knows how to act like an adult. I just don't. Well, we'll see. I could be wrong. I okay, be wrong. Uh, so that's it for this episode. Uh, thanks for listening. If you want to hear more, go on iTunes and download all of our episodes, or go to theboomernextshow dot com. That's our website. It has some extra info on there. You can see a. Uh, Pretty little picture of John and I's mug. John and I? I's mug? Ours. <laughs> Our mugs. <John. laughs> uh, the Boomer Next Show at yahoo.com. That's an email. And at Boomer Next Shows on our Twitter. And that about wraps it up for me, John. I am all out of words. What about you? I was out of words about 35 seconds ago. <laughs> <laughs>